Oh no. I must have over invited it. Regular viewers are going to know what's going on already. Plus you've seen a little clip with the sun at least, probably quite a big clue. Yes, today I'm doing that walk again. I find it fascinating that I own a small number of cars. I seem to do a lot of walking. So today, again, I am of course picking up a new car or a new car as far as new to the fleet is concerned. But what is it? I'll give you a clue, in fact, I'll give you two. Clue number one. There is a rumour going around, started by me, that I only really love small cars. I'm going to prove that that's not quite true. And number two, as I reach for my pocket in this drizzle in the wind, I need these. I don't need those. They are very relevant. And if you haven't worked it out by now, just bear with me for a couple of minutes, folks. Don't fast forward. Don't just skip along and go, oh, it's one of them, and click off. Follow me on the journey for a couple of minutes. Let me give you the story. Let me tell you why we decided on this car. And then let's show you this car. Oh, I've got to carry on walking. It's been breezy today. Thanks, Carl. Now all that's left is to put a CD on. With the sun behind me, which is not good for filming, I'm sure you already know what's going on. We're at Rotherston again. There's a car that's joined the fleet. There's also a car that's left the fleet, but maybe the teaser has already told you A, what car has gone, and B, what car is sitting behind the camera now. Just wanted to give a quick preamble as to why I've done this. So, I, I'm more of a fan of classic cars, and. The, to be honest the Clio was because um, the Clio has gone yes Project Chloe has been sold and the new owner I'm sure is looking is looking after it and enjoying the fact that it was a pampered car Chloe's gone was a bit too modern wanted something a bit more classic but then it was a choice of do I want something that directly replaces it do I want another hot hatch etc I looked at lots of different cars many of which were hot hatches but I couldn't make my mind up then this car came up for sale now I have previously owned a car of this make before but it was a smaller model. It was the only car that I was ever involved in quite a major accident and it was, well it was written off but it did its job and there's a clue anyway as if you haven't had the clue already at Caesar. It did its job and it protected me completely fine. Now the accident wasn't my fault but ultimately there was a few vehicles involved. So why did I buy this one? Well, when it came up for sale, it came up from sale from a, a place that most of you should already know already. It's the famous Red Sock place. KGF Cars, no less. So, of course, I travelled over to Peterborough and I met Carl at KGF Cars. So, of course, we fell in love with the car and ultimately I bought the car. I love the colour. I love the spec. It's a base spec. And as you've probably already noticed as well, it's got wheel covers on. We'll talk about why that spec is like it is in a moment, but we just really need to introduce the car and we need to officially adopt it into the channel, don't we everyone? So, without further ado, welcome to my Volvo S70 Project Philomena.
where do I start everyone? Well, let's address the two elephants in the room first of all. No, it's not an estate car. No, it's not an 850R or a T5R. Of course, I would love one of those. But the condition of this, the mileage and the previous owners, I had to have this car. And it's not even the 20 valve model, it's the 10 valve model. But we'll talk a bit more about that in a couple of minutes. But it is a 2.5 litre, five cylinder engine and it is silky smooth. And it's mated to a good old fashioned automatic gearbox. Look at the condition on the outside. Loving the wheel covers. Owner specified Volvo mud flaps because, well, what a fussy owner. There is pretty much not a mark on this car. There's no door dings down the side. There is the slightest mark if you really wanted to be picky, but then I have to remind myself that the car is basically 26 and a half years old. The owner also specified fitted headlamp protectors. Of course, we have wash wipe on this car. We'll talk about why in a few minutes. We've got the smallest of stone chips that have been gently touched in. But from the outside, that really is it. I cannot fault the car at all. So when I picked the car up from KGF, it's the first time ever that I've purchased a car from a garage where the water was beading that well. I didn't really need to polish it. It was absolutely stunning, but I've put auto glim on it and extra gloss protection on the top of that because I'm fussy and I'm old. And I'm a big believer that until you polish the car, you don't know every bit of the car. I now know every bit of the car, everyone, and it's absolutely stunning. There were no surprises whatsoever. Before we get into the car, let's talk a little bit about the history then, which is part of the reason that basically it sold the car to me. So the lady that first owned this, it's been owned by two people basically for 26 years or 20, yeah, 26 years. And in those 26 years, it was owned first by the lady and then her husband. And they've just been fastidious with how they've looked after the car. The car has always been garaged and it's always been serviced at a local place to them in Stratford-upon-Avon. Now, it wasn't a Volvo dealer, it was serviced at Volvo initially, but it then it's been religiously serviced at a garage that must be local to them, that they obviously trust. And I've had a look, because of course I've got all the paperwork to prove the history of this car, I've had a look online and I can see with all the Google review, the Google reviews even, why they chose that garage. So this car has had timing belt kits, etc. fitted every eight years, which is what it's due to have, and I've got paperwork to prove that. And it had one done at 31,000 miles, in 2022 again by the same garage it's had four new tires on six months ago uni royal rain expert fives it says and apparently with shark skin technology so again philomena does not need new tires the car to be quite honest looks like it's come off a used volvo forecourt at six months old that's my view let me know in the comments what your view is it looks absolutely stunning i have already got some replica dealer plates on order now don't worry everyone i'm not getting rid of what's on the car but i am going to take them off and look after them and just put some new replica plates on because i think it will just finish the look quite nicely what do you reckon i just think it's a stunning looking car i hope you agree i love the combination of the blue if you can hear me over noisy Land Rover Discovery. I love the colour combination of the blue with the interior which we're going to have a closer look at in a minute and brochures because I have to have period correct brochures. With the interior I think it's absolutely stunning and all the door shuts I know I'm going to say that at least twice in this video probably more all the door shuts are just absolutely perfect the lines, the symmetry of the whole thing is just perfect. I'll tell you something else I noticed the other day, well, when I was polishing it yesterday, actually. My background is automotive glass, so I always have a look at what it says on the glass. This car has never had a glass replacement anywhere on it. Every single glass is marked at Pilkerton, which I used to work for, made in Sweden, and it's got 97 next to it, which basically means there's never been any accident damage that's involved glass. There's never been any vandalism that's involved glass. I'm going to show you all the markings just to prove. So again, again, optical, so solar control, green glass, Sweden 97, Sweden 97, Sweden 97, 
unsurprisingly the same and Sweden 97 at the back we also have the original selling selling dealers decal on the back or dealer sticker should I say on the back which again is lovely I can't fault the car everyone on the outside at all the marks are so it would be sound so petty for me to highlight them I just don't see how it's worth it I don't even think most will come up on camera I love the badging I love the fact that it says 2.5 and I rather like the meat exhaust. Of course, it's got electric aerial. Everything on this car, and there is a lot on this car, works absolutely perfectly. Thanks to KGF and how they choose their cars, of course. To be honest, I enjoyed the drive to KGF and I enjoyed the train ride to go and pick this car up very exciting day it did drizzle a little on the drive home as you'll see in a video because i've filmed the first reaction of me driving this car you'll be able to see that on the first drive home video so there are not many of these s70s left on the road now i know many people don't believe the data when they look at how many's left part of my role used to be to get data from dvla and analyze the data and i admit that there is some data that they would send that looked a bit inconsistent and there was even some spelling mistakes but there is a low number of these vehicles that are left on the road particularly the s70 because i guess you would argue for logical reasons that the v70 which i think looks lovely and of course is even more practical was more popular not one spec of this car seems to have more than 100 on the road left and for this particular spec there seems to be less than 50 on the road let's take a look inside Of course what we have inside is well it's just typical volvo dashboard very clear very nice very happy in fact the interior of this car is so lovely i don't think it's going to come up on camera everyone the seats are super comfy because ultimately in my opinion saab and volvo always did the best seats always the most comfortable seats So as part of the luxury pack, you're going to upgrade for the head unit. So the head unit is actually an SC805 instead of, I think, an 802. Yes, SC805. It actually does it there. And of course, as part of the comfort pack, you get leather seats. And as part of the winter pack, they're heated leather seats. The driver's one has got a memory function. Armrest, obviously. We have a glove box just there with of course proper volvo handbook service book everything in there as i've already said the services are well up to date we've even got a genuine volvo bulb kit and a spare bulb again there i like the fact there's also an additional shelf i think that's really cool there is no sunroof but if you have a look at the headlining i think you'll agree the headlining is in excellent condition I'd say that the only thing on the interior is that little bit there. And you need to bear in mind the car is 26 and a half years old. So I said we'll have a quick look at the brochure because I do like to have brochures that matches the car. So the first thing we'll do is we'll flick the pages over. So the colour of this one is code 431 Aqua Pearl. But then of course we had some additional packs so the interior is called arena code 3990 and now i'm going to look at what you actually got with the packs so the winter pack we gained traction control headlamp wash wipe heated front seats as we've already said and then with the luxury pack we've gained electronic climate control the leather faced upholstery as we've already seen the upgraded sc805 rds cd radio cassette with a six disc auto changer in the boot which we'll see in a minute and then we continue over here with the red wood dashboard because as you can see it's red wood and there isn't a mark on the wood whatsoever we also have cup holders illuminated driver's vanity mirror 
electric driver's seat with memory, as we've said, and electric front seats. So, there's a whole lot going on on this standard Volvo S70. Before we leave the interior, what do you think, everyone? I'm always honest on these videos. Why wouldn't I be? There are no other marks. The only other thing to say on the driver's side, and if you Google this, Volvo of this generation, they suffer from this. Passenger side is fine, but on the driver's side, the vinyl has become a little unstuck. I've seen a couple of options of how to repair that, but I hope you would agree that is very minor. Other than the mark on the seat, that is it for the interior. But I will show you the rear as well, because it's done the same on the rear door. So as you can see, the vinyl again has come away there. It's basically come off the glue. As I say, there are a couple of options to sort that. But while we're here, we'll have a quick look. You see there's a 12 volt socket in the back. I like the color contrast, you've got the darker leather at the bottom half of the doors and then going around the door cappings and then you've got the lighter lever that's carried on into the doors from the seats i think that's lovely the carpet quality it's absolutely awesome the owner specified winter mats and carpet mats so we've got winter mats and i've currently got carpet mats at home but the interior is just lovely obviously there's a ski chute there and if we look here, because of course it's a Volvo, isn't it? So if we look here, there's the first aid kit. Fran was checking out the first aid kit yesterday, and apart from her saying that everything was there, she said, good quality scissors. I said, well, it would be good quality scissors, wouldn't it? It's a Volvo. So that is the interior. I'm going to step back a sec, just to get a better view. There's just not a mark on it, and I love how it's finished. It really is solid. And when you shut the door, and of course all the doors are the same, you get that satisfying clunk. If we go back to the front, on all four doors of course, you get the red light. But listen to the door shuts. Isn't that just lovely? And look at the car, everyone. I'm in love with this car. Let's have a look at the boot. So this fussy owner also specified a mat for the rear yes there's a couple of Volvo jackets because I'd already got them so why wouldn't you big boot obviously not as big it's not a wardrobe carrying v70 is it but it's still a very sizable boot and if I can just have a peek under here everything is good and solid if I can get at it no repairs Locking wheel nut key because although the wheel covers the owner actually specified to still have a locking wheel nut. Never heard of that before, so that's cool. Jack. And that's it really. And again, it's all lined, lovely. It's just a quality piece of kit. Handy handle there. Let's pull the boot down. It's just lovely. I've got to remind myself where the bonnet pull is. So we can have a look at that 2.5 litre under here 2.5 litre five cylinder but 10 valve engine as we've already said and there we have it so of course what denotes this one or, or, or differentiates this one from the 20 valve is it doesn't say 20v on the top it just says double overhead cam of course or dohc but look at the condition i'm going to spend a minute with the camera everyone please stay with me look at the condition under the bonnet all the original stickers it's all good it's absolutely spotless 33,000 miles I have to keep reminding myself of this 26 and a half years old. I think that's really lovely. What do you reckon? 
So I mentioned, of course, this car is a 2.5, but the 10 valve, not 20 valve. And I know there's going to be people, or a small number of people at least, that'll be like, oh, the 20 valve is much better, and it's better because of X, Y, and Z. I'm going to support this car, of course, because I've just bought it. But in reality, there's not a lot of difference. Yes, of course, the 20 valve would be nice if it was fitted with a 20 valve. I'd be singing its praises. Why wouldn't I? And I'm sure it's a little bit smoother, and I've read somewhere that it's a little bit more free revving. This is not a performance car, and let's be honest, it doesn't look like a performance car. If I wanted a performance car, I would have bought the R or T5R, but there wasn't one in my price range and condition that I wanted. This is in my price range, and because I bought it, of course, and it is in the condition that I wanted. This doesn't need to be a fast car, but actually the speed difference between the 10 valve and the 20 valve well, I'm going to show you in print, just so that you can believe what I'm saying. So, as you can see here, this is for the 10 valve, and this is for the equivalent 20 valve. Now, remember, this car is an auto. That is very important when we're looking at the numbers. So, if we look at the performance, the top speed of the 10 valve on the auto is 121 miles per hour. The 20 valve is 124. And then we get to the 0-62. 10.6 seconds for the 10 valve and 10 seconds for the 20 valve. I'm not being deliberately defensive here, but I struggle to see where the major differences are between the 10 valve and the 20 valve. At the end of the day, the lump itself is pretty much the same lump and it's just silky smooth and it sounds absolutely lovely and it pulls really cleanly. At the end of the day, this is, let's be honest, it's a Volvo. It's a big, heavy, very safe car. The numbers are not really that much different. And then, of course, if I look at the fuel consumption, as you would expect, if you can see this on camera, of course, we'll do the extra urban. So the extra urban for this car comes in at 35.3 miles per gallon, and the extra urban for the 20 valve comes in at 34. So, okay, I gain 1.3 miles to the gallon, but again, whilst that's good... I didn't choose the car for that reason, did I? At the end of the day, everyone... The main reasons I chose this car is I, I fell in love with the spec. I fell in love with its history. I enjoyed the fact that I finally got to KGF because I knew at some point in my life I was going to go to KGF. I just didn't know when. They do have some very nice expensive cars. I just enjoyed the whole buying experience. I loved the fact that the car was described absolutely exactly as it was, which was no surprise, I guess, because I kind of trusted that KGF would be honest with that. And on the day of collection, the car was just absolutely mint. And I genuinely feel as if the car looks like a car that was on a Volvo forecourt six months after six months old. That's how good this car feels to drive and looks. It presents really well. Thing is, do you agree? Now, I think I've said before, I know I've said before, I don't buy cars for YouTube, do I? I buy them for me, but I film them because... If you want to follow the story of any particular car that you have an interest in, or maybe all the cars that I own, then I'm more than happy for you to do that. In fact, I love the support. I love the emails I get. I love the comments I get. We get a lot of comments, and we get quite a few emails, sometimes personal messages. It's all good, but I don't do it for YouTube, do I? I just do it because it's what I want. And I had to sell Project Chloe because... She was the one with the most value. Let me put my nice brochure on the seat. She was the one with the most value. She was the one, therefore, that could give me more money back into the bank and, and give me more options of maybe buying a car that doesn't cost as much money because this car didn't cost as much money, of course, which freed up more cash to look after the cars I've currently got even better. But if I don't sell a car occasionally, everyone, I'm sure you'll understand, I'm not going to be able to experience and become part of another car's history, am I? And I want to do that in my life. Yes, they're tough decisions. They're always tough decisions. I know people that have had to make those tough decisions. I've just done the same with the Clio. But the Clio was pampered during the time that it was with me. And this car is now going to get pampered too. As to where this sits in the oh, I don't want to ever sell category. I'm going to stick my neck out. Or my nose out. And say that this is firmly in the I don't want to sell category. And I know at the moment it's my excitement level is higher. I haven't long picked this car up at the time of filming the reveal video. But actually... The car is stunning, and it's going to get used as a car. So although it's got low miles, it's on 33,000. Did I? I'm not even sure I've mentioned that in the video yet. It's on 33,000 documented miles. 
Oh, while I talk about the models, there is something I definitely want to mention. I'd have been disappointed if I hadn't. Check out the MOT history on this car, everyone. Go ahead. The registration you've seen on the video, it's an R718 AAC. Obviously, history electronically goes back to 2006. Go and check out the history. It's never had an advisory in its life. This car has been well looked after. So that, everyone, is the Volvo S70, the P80 model. It's now firmly on the fleet, the Live to Drive fleet. Hope you enjoyed this reveal video. If you did, give it the thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, there's going to be a link somewhere here in a few moments. Click on it. It's free, but it does show your support and it helps build the channel. Welcome, Project Philomena. Oh, did I say what, why we chose Philomena? Well, Philomena is a girl's name. It's obviously a Swedish name. But it also stands for something like Robust Protector. You can't argue that a Volvo S70 is a robust protector, can you? Enjoy whatever it is you're driving, everyone. The only thing left now, everyone, is what to do to it. I'm thinking 850R wheels, lowering springs, spoiler, see if someone can fit a turbocharger, what do you reckon? I'm joking, hell will freeze over before I modify this car.